happy to be here. And I'm, I want to share a mini anecdote before officially starting. So I'll explain why I'm so happy. Uh, I love to work with Alexir. I know as much as you do. But you know that the developer side is totally different than the speaker experience. So last year, I got an invitation to a conference, and I want to say no because I was nervous. My colleagues were trying to convince me, like, oh, come on, you should talk about this. We can help you to practice, blah, blah. And I kept saying, no, I don't want to. I think it's not for me until someone mentioned it to Francesco. Francesco promised me a beer, and I accepted. Uh, yeah, I don't know if, I, if I'm proud about it, but that happened. At the end, everything went well. I gave the conference, and that actually was my first technical talk ever in English. So it was something amazing. It was a great experience. But I'm saying this because I think the community played an essential role in it. It's really nice to be with people that love to share and explore crazy stuff. So that's why I'm happy to be here. And that's why I want to start by saying thank you, BIM community, for making the speaker experience something that you want to repeat. Because this time was so much easier to decide. So that being said, let's start with the crazy stuff. Erlang Fundamentals for debugging Elixir. Uh, well, just a mini introduction. My name is Lorena Mireles. I'm Mexican. I am an Elixir developer at Erlang Solutions, and I love coffee. Uh, it all started with this picture. He is an Ericsson engineer, trivial shooting a telephone, a telephone switch. And this graphically looks crazy because, come on, you can see the image and it looks like you, you cannot solve that. But if you think about it, that is what happens every day. That is what we do all the time. Uh, the number of the users of the current systems and the way that we need to find the errors is not so far from this image. Um, we, we usually need to dive into a pool of thousands or even millions of users to find a bug. So, okay, let's say that we do that. We find the problem, we fix it, and then what? It will happen again. And it's not because I'm being negative, it's because there are situations and conditions that we cannot control. But we can have a way to handle it efficiently and make this process easier. So back to this picture, this is what happened. Ericsson developed a troubleshooting strategy that brought to the beam and that became the foundation of a set of tools to have that, that give us full, full visibility of a system. And that foundation is based on the Erlang trace base. The Erlang trace base are building functions that allow us to enable and disable the low level tracing mechanisms in, Erlang, in the Erlang runtime system. Those trays allow us also raise events uh, for local and global functions. You can print those messages in the shell or you can send them to a log file in a very specific format so they are readable. And you can do all the things without having to recompile the system. So that is something very useful. These two functions are the main functions, trace and trace pattern. They are not auto imported, so you need to use the Erlang prefix. And they, they are very, very powerful. But now let's say that we want all the events in a system that are failing. And for example, an e-commerce system. Uh, if a purchase is failing and you trigger an event every time that a user makes a purchase, you're going to have a lot of information that do not provide the, the detail that you need. So we need to specify the conditions for those events. And here is where the, oh, where the match specifications come in. This is just an example about the trace pattern. This is the syntax and a main example. Let's say that I want everything from the Kotlin model, the hello function, and then it's the RT. With the second value, with true, I'm enabling. And then I define that I want the local functions. But you can explore with local, with global, and define what, what you want there. Like I say, we need a filter to specify the conditions that we're looking for. 
So time to talk about match specifications. Match specifications are conditions that a set of arguments must meet. And in this case, they are useful for filtering and manipulating the trace events. So you can define what you need with match specifications. Let's see an example. I took this directly from the Erlang official documentation. So as you can see, you can have the condition that you want and then what you need. Now in this case, if the first argument is verbose, do this. So this is really cool. This is really powerful. There is only a minor detail with this, and it's the fact that you need to have a certain level of experience with Erlang to understand and manipulate this. So it can be a little weird if this is the first time that you're seeing this. Fortunately, we don't need to do that manually. We have DBG, which is a user-friendly wrapper for all these things, for TraceBees and for match specifications, and allows us to do exactly the same things. So I'm gonna show you a small example. Let's say that we have this model and a random function, in this case, complete order, and I want to execute that. So apparently my input is correct, but I don't know, something is failing. So we're gonna use a DBG. So we start the DBG tracer, then we define that we want all the calls and we add the, the time step. And with TPL, I'm specifying that I want the local functions for this model, for Codebeam America. I'm not interested in the functions or in the RIT. And that's it, I can have the trace with that. Now, the trick with DBG is that if you are testing in a safe environment, you can do whatever that you want, as usual. But if you are doing this in a live system, you need to be really careful about the, the specification, the conditions that you are trying. Because if you are not careful with that and you have a lot of events, like I said uh, before, you can print the events in the shell. So if you don't define the filter correctly, you're gonna have a lot of events in the shell and then type the command to stop the tracer would be impossible. And that means the Erlang runtime system will run out of memory. So the important line here is to stop the DBG. And actually there is a real story about it. There was a national service outage in a telephone network because of DBG. Well, we, we can talk about that later, no, but not me. <laughs> So that's the important part, but again, we don't need to do it manually because in this community there are a lot of tools and a lot of crazy stuff that we can use. So we have Rexbook, which is an elixir wrapper for the Erlang tracing debugger. It's based on the Redbook Erlang library, and we can do exactly the same. So. This is the only thing that we need. This is equivalent that the dbg command that I just showed you. And here I'm saying that we need to start the tracer for this model, for Codbeam America model. I'm not interested in the functions or the RIT, so this is enough for now. And I'm gonna show you, this is a GIF, so probably it's gonna be confusing, but I'll explain it in a moment. But I have the input, then we start the tracer and as you can see, there is a problem where we can see the trace there. The important thing here is the last line. This is what is happening. I just removed some things that we don't need for this example. So the first line is starting the trace here. Then I define my function, the, the model and function with that input. And as you can see, I have the trace. I have the complete order, validate price, and validate payment method. If you remember the original function was this. And after validate payment method, I have a happy client call that is not happening here. So I can see that that was the last call, validate payment method, and I can see the input. So this is really useful to debug my system, but again, the important thing here is the last line. We have rebuke done, 
that means that the tracer stopped automatically. We didn't define anything. We didn't do that. We just specified the model and still this is happening. And this is something, this is the huge advantage with Rexbox because even if you forget to define how many events do you want or a timeout, Redbook will do it automatically. So we have a really user-friendly wrapper for all the things that we were seeing. And you can combine all of these things. I don't know if I mentioned it. But trace, trace allows you to define the processes that you want to trace. Trace pattern allows you to define the set of functions in those processes and match specifications are our filter. So this talk is about debugging Elixir, but the main focus was not specifically about the Elixir library or the tools that we already have, was about this. Because sometimes we are not aware of all the things that we have in the BIM ecosystem, and it's a technology that has been battle tested for a lot of years. These combinations allow us to do everything. Uh, I think I forgot to add a trace here, but it also received three parameters. And with these things, with the match specifications, you can create new tools, new filters, not just this library. These are uh, the fundamentals for the debugger and for the process manager. So what I want to highlight during this talk is that there are many things in the beam that we can take advantage of and explore with new languages. Not just Elixir, there was a Glim talk, so you can apply all these fundamentals to those languages and have the power of these things. I feel like I'm doing it very quickly, so I feel like I'm missing something, but let me, let me remember what happened. Here, the trace pattern is also useful if you want to add the match specifications here, but at the end, this true and this local or global is what you can specify with Redbook, also with DBG. But like I say, if you are doing in a live system, you need to be really careful that and define the filters correctly, and if not, you can use what we have right now or you can create new things. So. I think that was the main focus of this talk. I'm not sure that it's correctly the time. I still feel like I'm forgetting something. But that is, that is one I want to share with you, that we can have all, all the things that we want, we can create, and we can explore with the things that we have in the beam. So you should try Red, uh, Rexbook, because even if your application doesn't have the dependency, you just add it like any other dependency. But if you didn't do it, you can connect a, no, a node with this dependency and you can trace all the events that you want and you can have information about this. And maybe it looks something simple, but it's very powerful because live systems cannot be interrupted and with this, we don't need to recompile the code and we need to also send the events to a log file and have all the information that we need. So I think that my conclusion was kind of invitation to explore all the crazy things that we have in the beam and take advantage of them to create new stuff and keep contributing to the community. Thank you. It, it is always good to go over tracing yeah. patterns. That is without a doubt. They're, they're advanced. Um, they're not a simple technique uh, that a beginner would uh, you know, beginners worry more about calling functions and you know getting things done, and less about watching themselves uh, make code. So uh, it's always good to go over tracing. Thank you. Um, any questions about debugging and/or working together? Um, please. I feel like I say everything in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John. Oh, here. Thanks. Thanks for talking about tracing because I don't think it's talked about enough. Um, so historically, I, I've always reached for recon and recon trace. It, is that a tool you worked with? And if so, do you have any comparisons of why I might gravitate towards uh, Rexbug instead as my higher level protected tracing mechanism? 
I haven't worked with Raycon, but I know it's also based on this function, so it's also another wrapper that we have. And I haven't tried it directly, but probably it's something similar. And so cool, I, so I worth, worth looking. I mean, it was, I, I guess I had never heard of Rexbug, so now I can go look at that and mm. do some comparisons. And I'll try with Raycon. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is it, Lorena. Cool. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you, Robert. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.